The final misconception around sustainable flight is that existing carbon offsetting schemes are a viable way of reducing emissions. International aviation and shipping are the only two sectors not included in the UN climate change targets set out in the 2015 Paris Agreement. The aviation industry has instead been allowed to come up with its own measures in terms of sustainability and reducing carbon emissions. A few years ago, the aviation industry got together and they came up with something they called the Carbon Offsetting and Reduction Scheme for International Aviation, or CORSIA. This is a scheme created for the industry, by the industry, and apparently enables carbon neutral growth from 2020 through the use of carbon offset credits. The idea is that airlines will buy credits when they emit carbon, and those credits will go towards reducing emissions elsewhere. So basically, I don't want to reduce my emissions, but I'll pay somebody else on the promise that they'll emit less. However, the Corsia scheme has numerous weaknesses. For instance, from 2020, it's only voluntary and only becomes mandatory from 2027. Even after 2027, it's not legally binding and there's no enforcement mechanisms to ensure that airlines or countries actually stick to the rules. The next issue, and this is really important, is that it completely ignores non-CO2 emissions. And as I've said previously, these have a similar, if not even greater impact than CO2 emissions. But this isn't accounted for at all in the Corsia scheme. Another issue is that it only applies to carbon emissions in excess of the 2019 level. So for the considerable future, the majority of emissions will not be offset. So every year, emissions up to the 2019 level can go by for free without doing any offsetting, which in itself is a phenomenal amount of carbon. Additionally, carbon emissions are offset using a type of scheme which has so far proven to be pretty ineffective. For example, a study of similar EU offset schemes found that up to 85% of projects covered had a very low likelihood that emissions reductions were actually achieved. Perhaps most obviously, the offset credits are just far too cheap per tonne of CO2. For example, they'll cost less than $10 per tonne. As a comparison, industrial CO2 capture currently costs about $1,000 per tonne and is best case projected to drop to around $100 per tonne over the next few decades. That's still over 10 times the price of these Corsia offsets. And that $100 per tonne doesn't even include the cost of actually storing the carbon after you've captured it, either deep underground or deep under the sea. So yeah, the scheme's got a lot of weaknesses, and you're probably wondering why. Well, the scheme's been agreed by most states globally, and if you've got the maximum number of countries in a negotiation, you've got the maximum number of compromises, particularly if some round the table have large vested interests in encouraging flying. So the takeaway messages for Corsia are, firstly, it's seen by many as being far too weak. Secondly, it's very unlikely to significantly reduce airline emissions. This is because it won't even apply to most emissions, and when it does, the offset credits are far too cheap. Thirdly, these issues are, in part, due to the fact the scheme was weakened at the request of some specific countries.